Welcome to the 2011 Local Heroes Awards in celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, presented by Union Bank and KQED. Good evening, I'm John Bolin, president of KQED, and I want to welcome you to this evening's annual celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month with Union Bank. For 16 years, Union Bank and KQED have partnered for this special award ceremony to celebrate local heroes in our community. Together, we've saluted over 85 individuals who are a continuous source of inspiration for us all. On behalf of everyone at KQED, I want to thank Union Bank for your continued partnership and support. Let's thank Union Bank. Tonight, we're pleased to recognize four amazing people for their outstanding contributions. Nominated by community members and leaders, these local heroes working tirelessly in the community represent the highest values shared by KQED's mission of community service. I know you'll be inspired by their stories. Congratulations to all of our honorees tonight. Now I'm pleased to introduce Daphne Lee. Daphne is a member of KQED's Board of Directors and also serves as Board Secretary and Chair of the Strategic Planning Committee. Like all the members of our board, she is a dedicated volunteer from the community. Please welcome Daphne Lee. Thank you, John. This has been a historic year for Asian Americans in the Bay Area. We have our first Asian American mayor in San Francisco, and the Board of Supervisors now has four members of Asian descent, including board president. And across the Bay, we have our first Asian American woman to be elected to the mayor's office in Oakland. Much like our heroes, these officials have chosen public service as a career and are making a difference in all of our lives. On behalf of the board, the community advisory panel, and staff, congratulations to all our honorees. It's now my pleasure to introduce George Tanaka, Senior Vice President and Head of Retail Specialized Markets at Union Bank. With more than 20 years of banking experience, George is the driving force behind Union Bank's growth in the Japanese American community. Please welcome George Tanaka. Good evening and thank you all for being here tonight. I'm honored to serve as your host for tonight's event Welcome to the 2011 Local Heroes Awards program. We're gathered tonight to recognize some of our community's most inspirational leaders. Every year as we celebrate cultural diversity and recognize extraordinary community leaders with our Local Heroes program, we are impressed with the countless nominations we receive and that holds especially true again this year. Our commitment to celebrate the contributions of these outstanding individuals who strive to enrich the lives of others has remained strong since the program's inception. Tonight, we celebrate the vibrant Asian Pacific American community in Northern California by recognizing some of its most influential and inspiring members. The individuals honored this evening are part of the same efforts set forth by Union Bank, and these local heroes make our communities a better place to live, work, and raise our families. And more importantly, they inspire us to make a difference. The contributions of tonight's honorees are important to our communities, and they play an essential role in impacting our state, country, and our world. Thank you for your tireless commitment and the work you do. Let us begin by recognizing our first honoree, Dr. Gregory Fung. Dr. Fung is a doctor by day and dedicated community advocate and theater member by night. He uses his two biggest passions, medicine and theater, to help improve our community. Let's learn more about Dr. Gregory Fung while we watch his video profile. Hello, I'm Pierre Abis of Union Bank. Diversity is one of our most closely held values. This is why we're proud to honor local heroes in celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Let's meet one of our honorees. 
My name is Gregory Fountain. I've been a physician in San Francisco for the last 25 years. And that's my day job. In the evenings and weekends, I'm involved in a large community theater group. It's called Friends Of. A lot of people get involved in it. The core is my family and my six brothers and sisters, um, uh, many, many cousins and friends and relations. The Lancy Street Foundation has uh, helped us incredibly. They provide trucks and personnel. The theme is uh, sharing and caring, a message that works for uh, audiences of any age. We perform for children, for seniors, disadvantaged kids from all over the Bay Area. For those of us who are trying to pass it on, I th I'm hopeful that we benefit the most because we get the experience of actually working to help folks. Boy, it feels really good. It's with a great deal of gratitude that on behalf of all those involved in helping others through volunteering in the Friends of group that I accept this gracious award. 22 years ago, a few of us wanted to find a way to give back to this community that had given us so much. We started with an original small skit performed at a children's center staged in front of a volleyball net draped with a bed sheet and decorated with a clown face to tell the story of, a fr of friends helping a sad clown find his smile again. Since that time, we have been fortunate in being able to bring the idea that was regularly taught and demonstrated to us about caring and sharing to help everyone to an audience of thousands with a new production each year. In the years since, we have grown from a few to now more than 100 volunteers who come up with the script, design and sew the costumes, build the props, paint the scenery, cook all the food that our little army travels on, uh, prompts the actors from backstage, composes original songs and choreographs new dances and mock battles, they're now, that are now staged on a 40 foot by 30 foot proscenium stage set up each year by the volunteers themselves. Working together like this through the entire year it takes to mount our productions, we get the opportunity to make real for ourselves what our parents taught us and showed us about helping others however and whenever you can. And today, our family is a little larger for having received this honor of being recognized as a local hero during this Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. For the recognition of the commitment, effort, and sheer hard work put in by so many, I'm grateful to Union Bank and KQED, whose efforts in sponsoring and presenting these awards let a few more people know what it is we are trying to teach ourselves and pass on to others. That sharing and caring is a guideline that is worth making into an everyday reality. Thank you. Our next honoree is Paul Osaki. Mr. Osaki is the executive director of the Japanese Cultural and Community Center of Northern California. He has been deeply involved with the Japanese American community for many years and has recently worked closely with the Japan earthquake relief efforts. Join me in viewing his video profile now. My name is Paul Osaki and I work as executive director of the Japanese Cultural and Community Center of Northern California. The mission is, is really to be a gathering place to preserve and promote our Japanese cultural heritage and traditions. The Japantown Community Interface Service was an opportunity to commemorate the one month anniversary of the earthquake and tsunami. The Japanese Cultural Community Center has become the focal point for our community earthquake and tsunami relief efforts. The response has been truly heartwarming to receive contributions, donations from literally all over the world. Our monies are going to help build and sustain two emergency shelters, and we were also able to open up three child care centers. 
You're not a community center just in the good times. You're a community center during the worst of times. And that's what we've been able to do is bring the community together. Good evening. I would um, really first like to take this opportunity to congratulate, congratulate my fellow honorees for their volunteerism, humanitarian efforts, and commitment to the Asian American Pacific Islander community. I would also like to thank KQED and Union Bank for this honor. But this award is, is, really, is really not mine. It belongs to my staff, both past and present, who believe in the mission of our organization, believe in the vision and the dream. They are and have been the real heroes of the community center. They sacrifice more and work harder and longer than anyone will ever know. This award also belongs to the hundreds of volunteers, including my board of directors, who make it possible for us to do what we do every day seven days a week. We will not be celebrating the 25th anniversary of opening the doors of our community center without them. But most of all, by honoring me here tonight, you honor the Nisei, the second generation of Japanese Americans who were forcibly removed from their homes and communities during World War II. It is this generation who has sacrificed the most and who has taught us the greatest lessons of life, never giving up hope, and who first helped us to rebuild our community after the war. It is this generation, by honoring me tonight, that you really honor. I would also like to dedicate tonight's award to the victims and survivors of the earthquake and tsunami that struck Japan on March 11th of this year. I hope that you will continue to support them, to keep them in your thoughts and prayers, and that you will continue to support the recovery effort. Lastly, I would like to thank my family and friends who are here tonight. Uh, without them, um, I would not be here. Um, without you for allowing me to pursue my dream, I could do nothing. In particular, I'd like to thank um, my brother Glenn, who is really my hero. He has um, been battling state for cancer for the past five years. Um, and he has shown me the true meaning of courage and what a real hero is all about. Thank you. Please welcome Brenda Wong Aoki, accompanied by Mark Izu. In Japan, the storytellers say that deep, deep in the heart of the earth is a giant catfish who likes to dance. And dance. And dance and dance and dance. So ho, 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 ho. Until the earth rolls like waves. Fire bursts from its fissures. The sea jumps from its bed and races across the land. When the dance is done, silence. Then comes a moaning. Cries. Birth pains of a new world being born. No longer rich or poor, humble or proud, just alive, awake. To the power of nature and the miracle of life.
our third honoree tonight is Mr. Takashi Tanemori, the founder of the Silkworm Peace Institute. Mr. Tanemori is a survivor of the bombing on Hiroshima, who despite much adversity and emotional hardship, found inner peace and is now sharing it with all of us. Join me in watching his video profile. My name is Takashi Tanemori, and I am a survivor of Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. I lost six members of my family, including both parents. And through artwork, I just simply tell not only the devastation of Hiroshima per se, but out of that, there's a new life emerged. And it is that energy that I want to convey. My desire to speak to young people, the junior high and high school, I just simply tell to learn to be grateful and promoting peace through forgiveness. So for me, in the midst of the hardship, the darkness, that's that greater desire cause us to think other energies in the world. And that's peace, that's the hope. Thank you so much. Since August 6, 1945 to this day has been a long journey. But many people have asked me, Takashi, how did you survive after bombing in Hiroshima, post-war in Japan, then life in America as immigrant who can speak any English? Well, I have answered for you. I join with you by becoming American citizens. But the journey coming to America for one purpose, one purpose alone, to revenge or avenge my father's death. It was 40 years after the bombing in Hiroshima. I was on the way to San Francisco, another payback speech. Then emotion caught up. I heard the voice of my daughter, who was eight years old. And she said, Daddy, I know you're trying to get even with Americans. But do you know many American children are going to suffer like you did? And some surviving grown-ups will take revenge on your children. Daddy, is there any other way? It was the first time I ever faced the truth with my heart. But to come to the place of forgiveness wasn't easy except that teaching my father some right codes. Then I found a new faith in person Christ Jesus gave me the strength. Having discovered the forgiveness, I understand the first time ever the re relationship, human relationship, whoever might be, is only sustained by learning to forgive. But I am grateful again, discovering the forgiveness. I find inner peace. So no matter whatever situation you might find, whoever you are, whoever you are, I know, I know with all my heart, with the forgiveness, we are able to overcome, settle any and all human conflict without resorting to violence or war. Thank you so much. Our final recognition of the evening is for Donald Young, who is a director of programs at the Center for Asian American Media. It is essential for a community to tell its own story and history, and this man has dedicated his career to making sure that Asian American communities bring their stories in their own voice to the media. Let's take a moment to view Mr. Young's video profile. I'm Don Young, and I'm the director of programs for the Center for Asian American Media. We're really here to help uh, tell the stories of Asian Americans that haven't been told in mainstream media. We were initially founded by a group of community leaders, community activists, educators, filmmakers who 
really saw an absence of, of our stories on screen. We've really tried to figure out how to expand the scope and reach of our work towards digital media. We host the San Francisco International Asian American Film Festival every year. We have been continuing our work through national public broadcasting. We continue to fund independent filmmakers. We have a number of national documentaries we're working on. We really hope that as an organization we can continue to tell incredibly engaging, relevant, personal stories that move people and share a perspective that isn't widely seen. Um, well, first, I'd like to thank the other honorees who do the really heroic work every day. Um, I, I personally need to thank a lot of people. First, my parents who are here, um, as well as my wife, Lisa, and daughter, Hannah, who give me the um, support, love and encouragement to do what I do on a daily basis. The, the CAM staff, a number of folks who are here, who are the most hardworking and talented group around and especially my boss, Stephen Gong, who um, has really sort of pushed me through these years. Um, th there are many other folks who, who I can't uh, mention here who have guided me, and I'd you know, like to thank everybody. I'd like to thank my heroes who are no longer with us, Jenna Sakamoto, Jim Yi, and, and our founder, Lonnie Ding. Those are, the, for me, the people who really, um, you know, allowed me to be here today. Um, I Personally, I, I, I actually really prefer to stay behind the scenes but today gives me a special opportunity to talk about what, what's in, inspired me and all of the, us at CAM. I proudly accept this honor as an acknowledgement of the entire CAM, CAM family, but more importantly, I want to recognize the filmmakers who quite simply, we could not exist without. In 1980, CAM was founded with goals as urgent as they were daring to give Asian Americans the opportunity to tell our stories our way. As the times and technologies have changed, we remain a community group by heart. Our community is independent artists who produce something unique, art with purpose. Their grit, determination, and at times reckless single-mindedness is what brings our stories to life. What inspires me? Christine Choi and Renee Tajima's seminal Who Killed Vincent Chin and its searing look at racism in America. Sp Spencer Nakasako's AKA Don Bonus a documentary as beautiful as it is real. Coma the Musical, a slice of life in a mostly dead town, all worth singing about. Leo Chang and his brave, brave film about the even braver Vietnamese community after Hurricane Katrina. Grace Lee Boggs, a soon to be 80, 96 year old activist from Detroit, becoming more relevant every day, followed by a filmmaker named Grace Lee. And finally, our community paving the way through sites like YouTube because commercial entertainment blindly ignores our talent. And there are so many more. In closing, I encourage all of you to stay engaged through media. It's so easy to become jaded by all of the preposterous posturing and clutter all around us, but when done right, movies that show life as it really is can be such a wondrous, life-changing thing. Thank you. It has been my sincere pleasure to serve you as your host tonight. Thank you also to our good friends at KQED. It is with their partnership that this event is made possible. We encourage all of you to visit unionbank.com slash heroes throughout the year to learn about past and present local heroes. And please participate in future nominations. Thank you. Please welcome Habib Khan, accompanied by Farhan Qureshi on the tablet.